Eat, Pray, Love. Then. Eat, Pray, Love, which is based on the best-selling. Is it memoir? Is that what you call it? A memoir by Elizabeth Gilbert. No, um, you'd say memoir, a memoir or autobiography. Yeah, but no, autobiography implies more of your life than just one year in which you decided to naff off around the world because you were having spiritual problems. So the story is somebody who's basically got nothing to moan or complain about decides to moan and complain and decides that what they're going to do is to go off, rather take a year off in order to find themselves. Did you ever see that? What does that mean? Exactly. Did you ever see that? There's a sketch on, remember the Kenny Everett video show? You're the same age as me, right? Fine. And there was, uh, and the, the deal was it was Willie Rushton climbing up the side of a mountain, right? And he gets to the top of the mountain and, f- and there's a guru up there played by uh, Kenny Everett and Willie Rushton says to the guru I have come all this way I want to know who am I and the guru pulls out a Polaroid camera takes a photograph of him gives him the camera and says there that's you that in a nutshell is the essence of the philosophy of, uh, of Eat, Pray, Love. So the story is she decides she's going to go and find herself by going to Italy to eat a bunch of pasta, by going to India to eat a bunch of spirituality, by going to Bali to basically get off with Javier Bardem. Uh, Julia Roberts' return to the uh, uh, central role in mainstream cinema is a clip and then we'll do the review. What are these? These, these are rambutan. They're delicious. It's like, uh, it's like an orange made love to a plum. Would you like some? When you put it that way. Oh, okay. Yes, oh. thank you. Beautiful, huh? Beautiful. Yeah. So, next attraction of the tour. Yes. Food from Bali. Oh, good. I'm starving. Where should we go? We should go to the best restaurant in town. Of course. My place. Subtle. <laughs> so, what to say about Eat, Pray, Love? Well, a review would be nice. No, 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 I know. I was talking rhetorically. Pea brain. Maybe you could have got that over and done with while you were listening to the clip. Okay. Um... <clears throat> I mean, it's rubbish, OK? It, it's it's long rubbish for a start. It's 133 minutes, which I make just around 10 minutes shorter than 2001, and there's really no need for it to be that. Um, the things that are wrong with it, I mean, obviously, quite apart from the fact that it's just a grotesque travelogue from beginning to end, and it's incredibly long. And I actually thought it had ended, and then Javier Bardem turned up, and I thought, blimey, Charlie, he's going to be in the film for like five minutes. But no, he's in it for a whole half an hour, because it was a whole half an hour longer than it needed to be. Quite apart from that, um, we should say that there is one good thing in it, is that Richard Jenkins is in it, and he's a good actor, and he does get to do the one good speech in the film in which he talks about, he remembers the, a trauma in his life in which he very sort of he struggles really hard to bring some sense of credence and credibility to the project and he almost pulls it off almost okay for the most part however the big problem with eat play over quite apart from the fact that it, it has this kind of what are those adverts that go this isn't just cream this is is it marks and spencer's or whatever it is this is you know sainsbury's cream whatever it is but it felt the whole film felt like this isn't just philosophy this is eat love pray philosophy this isn't just you know bogus spiritual, spiritual self in love this is julia roberts bogus. and we said that, that awful sense of like I've, you know i've gone to a supermarket and i've gone to buy a bunch of you know off the rack self-help books that tell me that basically Basically, um, I have to, you know, I have to love myself more. And in order to do that, I have to, you know, run around all these exotic locations. The other thing about the exoticism which really bothers me is that it has the same relationship with exoticism that those Emmanuel films did. I mean, it has this really patronising sort of, you know, Western imperialist approach to all this, which is, oh, I've got to go and find myself by going off to, I'll go to India, then I'll go to Bali, and I'll go to... Re- but these places that are, in inverted commas, foreign, because that's where I'll find my truth. And it's exactly the same. There used to be a whole thing with cinema that, um, and the Emmanuel movies are part of this and it was the same as the James Bond movies when people didn't travel that much and actually the idea of say, seeing somebody getting on a plane and going somewhere exactly like, was travelogue film that was part of the appeal of the film a lot of the James Bond films you know drew into that oh 007 you've got to go to Turin or oh, 007 you've got to go to because you're winning a prize oh 007 you know you've got to go to Switzerland or whatever it is in the, Eman- the very first Emmanuel film despite the fact that that was seen to be you know like a, like a racy sex film the, one of the things that appealed to people most was the thing about the aeroplane I mean you remember the most famous scene from Emmanuel happens on an aeroplane and it was it was the fact that it was on an aeroplane what 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 is that well you know that that Sylvia Christel you know has a there's a ding dong with somebody on an aeroplane. Years later, she'd end up. I've just thought of this. Years later, it's she'd end dong, up. It's ding dong. Earlier, you were saying DAB and Diggly Bong. Is, yeah. Is ding dong the same as Diggly Bong? Yeah, it is. It's basically derived from the same thing. Years later, Sylvia Christel would end up sharing a plane with. Uh, the guy who only did one James Bond film, George Lazenby, 
in the series called, it was like Emmanuel Reborn. And the whole plot of it was, I'm not making this up. This is a bit of a diversion, but I'm not making this up. George Lazenby sits down on a plane next to Sylvia Christel, who's now, you know, 50, whatever it is. He says, oh, blimey, aren't you Emmanuel? She says, yes, I am. He says, wow, I wonder if you can tell me any exciting stories. And she says, it's funny you should mention that because... And then it cuts, and that's a whole wraparound for a series of Emmanuel television programs. Anyway, the reason I mention this is because there is an ex a crass exoticism involved not in those, eroticism no exoticism which it was itself eroticized which underpins the whole so of this eroticized exoticism ex exotic. yeah. could it be exoticized could you exoticize exoticize. eroticism yes you probably could and in, in so a way manuel exoticized eroticism is that what you would call it had I had I, I had the that word brain space to take exoticise the eroticism? Well, what you have here. Excuse is, me, I'd like to order Mr. Blockbuster. Could I have and others uh, available? Have you got anything that you would classify as exoticised eroticism? This isn't just Buddhism. This is exoticised eroticised Buddhism, and it not is eroticised. It, eroticised. No, that's aerobics. It's it's eroticised aerobicised exoticised Buddhism. I mean, it is literally just this this bar fest of I'm going to go to Rome I'm going to learn to speak with my hands because you know the thing that I've observed did you know that in Italy everyone speaks with their hands you probably haven't noticed that before you haven't heard the joke about how do you gag an Italian you tie his hands behind his back I mean it's, like, it's that and you know what else they do in Italy you know position. what else they do in Italy they eat pasta all the time not they eat pasta position. and then they eat pizza Second oh and they all drive Vespers and they all wear smart <laughs> clothes and they're all really handsome now I'm going off to India you know what happens in India oh it's all very <laughs> philosophical now I'm going to Bali There's you know what happens when we're in Bali heroes. you go on the beach and suddenly Javier Bardem turns up. He nearly <laughs> runs you off the road with driving a truckload of chickens and you're on a bicycle. And the next thing you know, you're drinking flaming tumblers of Sambuca with him and he's telling you to, and I'm not making this bit up, he's telling you to go off with him on a three-day trip to an <laughs> island populated only by parrots. Right? This is the plot. And meanwhile, in the middle of this, there is a central thing, which is, I'm learning to love myself. Are you in any position and to I'm go And I'm sitting there going, yeah, all right, go on, what? Go on. And actually, what would have been really great is that at the end of the film, what, what the person had learned was, you know what? There is nothing but fear, desperation and murder. In the, I mean, actually, the last person, the last thing that should have happened, the last thing was she goes back to America, she goes to Hollywood, and Werner Herzog tells her that there is no God. The end. <laughs>